welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. There have been some developments on the energy planning and electricity restructuring fronts this week. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the latest on the Integrated Resource Plan and ESCOM's unbundling. Hi Terence. Hi uh, Chanel. Minister Gwede Mantash says he will be taking an updated IRP through cabinet processes soon. That's correct. You know, the IRP is supposed to be a, a living document that gets updated probably at least every two years, but I think f it really should be a yearly update. But we know that the initial plan, 2010 plan, uh, lasted until <laughs> the, the 2019 plan, which is the current plan, came in. And there was a lot of toing and froing before that one got updated. And by the very day it was updated, it was already out of date with technology cost assumptions that were out of date, demand assumptions that were very, very uh, inaccurate. So that is the nature of it, is why you have to keep it living to make it credible. So uh, there is now this process that's been underway for a while. Um, it's fairly unclear who's doing the drafting, but uh, the MREs take, got a document of sorts together and uh, the minister says he's going to be taking it to a cabinet committee uh, next week and that probably if it's approved there to go be tabled before the full executive it could be around uh, the 13th of September where cabinet actually deliberates on it and uh, either this allows or approves it to go into the public domain for a public consultation which is the crucial next step. So that's really where we're at. There's an old, outdated plan on which the current ministerial determinations are based and which procurement is being, uh, which is being used to procure new electricity. And there's now going to be an updated version that's been developed, but we don't know where, and, uh, and it's going to be um, potentially brought into the public domain fairly soon. What can we expect this document to contain? Well, we know that the minister himself is very vocal supporter of gas, of what he calls clean coal technology, which many question is whether it's been proven anywhere in the world, as well as um, a nuclear, especially small modular reactors, which are also an unproven technology. But those are the three that he champions quite vocally. So there's an expectation that those three technologies are going to feature somewhere in this update. But on the whole, you know, we know that the cheapest form of new electricity uh, and what's in the current plan uh, is renewable energy, solar, photovoltaic and wind. So I imagine those are going to also feature. But the allocations are going to be very, very closely scrutinised. And I think the drafting of this is also going to be heavily scrutinised. In the past, Eskim, it was a very techno-economic exercise. Eskim would do this, uh, go through a, a major process and then it would be consulted in the public uh, and then policy adjustments were made for industrial policy reasons or socio-economic development reasons. But there's a fear this time that it may be much more of a politically driven process that's going to sort of wedge in these technologies that are favoured by the minister, which haven't been fully costed or they policy adjustments that are embedded, in other words, without a really an explanation of the costs and benefits of those policy adjustments. So I think what we must expect is once it gets into the public domain that it's going to be a highly contested document. Now the Minister's already calling it RP 2023, so he's assuming that this thing's going to be approved before the end of the year. But if you look at what's on the menu of energy, uh, people that are stakeholders in the energy sector to consider, not only the normal regulatory processes that are underway at ESKIM around the, the, um, the, the regulatory clearing account that ESKIM is going through, but also there's going to be around net billing, around wheeling that go through the, um, the regulator. But there's also major architectural changes where Parliament has finally received the electricity regulation amendment bill that has to be considered. So that's a major piece of work that has to be, it's going to take a lot of energy, especially if we want it to complete it during this current parliament, which is what the, the wishes of government and organised business. So there's so much on the plate. And I think if this is going to, you know, deviate massively from a techno-economic lease cost model without any explanation of those costs or detailing of the costs. And if the technology costs included 
and the demand included are out of kilter with reality. One, it's going to undermine the credibility of the whole IRP process at a time when people are really looking beyond it because we know we're in entering a more of a competitive environment where basically financial realities will dictate, not so much political wish, wish lists. But that's very, very problematic in a context as we enter this more competitive phase because if the government plan is so uncredible and unrealistic and people are going a different direction, it means that your ability to shape uh, the, the sort of the non-electricity elements, the um, social economic development industrial policy is very much weaker if you don't have a credible document RP even though it's we all you know we're always going to deviate it from from it in some way in the end but the lack of credibility and also I think it could be a thing of where trust deficit really grows um, between government and the RPPs because they'll be used as a scapegoat they'll say oh but we wanted nuclear we wanted clean coal but these guys won't build it you know so we need a realistic plan and it's not clear yet what's going to be published and we hope for the best but I think we must expect the worst. Meanwhile the Department of Public Enterprises has provided an update on ESCOM's unbundling. Yes, uh, th th that was also in Parliament this week where the, the Parliamentary Portfolio Committee received this update and it seems major steps are being taken. We know that the National Transition Company South Africa has been sort of operationally separated but the legal separation requires a number of steps the appointment of the board still hasn't been made but we know that now names are before the department before the minister so there should be some action there lender consent is needed now that was supposed to be given by today there's an indication that that's, that deadline might well be missed again but we're getting close to lender consent because you know Eskom is massively indebted so when you restructure Eskom uh, the lenders have to have visibility of how this debt has been divvied out amongst the different unbundled units, even though it will be held by the, uh, the, the, the Eskom Holding Company, which will own these subsidiaries initially. There still has to be a clear line of sight there and consent to do this restructuring. I think that's getting pretty close. I think the big imponderable remains the NERSA aspect because we know there was an integrated three license application by Eskom uh, for, so to transfer from Eskom to the NTC and they've only received the one license to date and it's unclear what's happening with the trading and the import export license it has to be an integrated package NERSA also has to approve some of the transitional arrangements because we don't have a, a competitive market structure yet um, and it, we don't really cater for a transition, uh, transmission system operator, buyer and market operator. So there have to be transitional arrangements to allow this NTC to be the buyer of RPP, RPP and ESCOM generation power. So there's all those that also have to go through. You know, so, so that timing, I think there was a view that, um, that this would be operationalized by November. I don't think that's going to happen, I mean maybe, but I don't think so. I think what's going to happen is they will probably see a number of these processes being wrapped up before Eskom's financial year ends in March. And I think we're really going to see this being launched properly uh, from April 1 next year. But you know, you never know, things can happen and things can be accelerated. But they're just too many, I think, loose ends. But I think what we're getting is a sense that this is quite well advanced now. Um, also the distribution entity, we saw that going through a corporatization process where that's been approved by the DPE and the National Treasury. I think there will be a regulatory element to that as well. And then, you know, Eskom generation will also be then split up. So definite progress, which is positive, but uh, lots of balls in the air. And that's why adding a new one in the form of an updated RP, if it's, if it's a good one, that's all well and good and we can get through and we can have an RP 2023, but I don't think that's the expectation at the moment. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.